I've been asked to cover uh, a lot of ground, though, today in terms of how Vancouver in particular is addressing this issue of resilience uh, and really the convergence of issues. I'm having a hard time making sure I know what's on the screen. Uh, the, really the convergence of issues that we're facing, certainly across Canada and, and across North America and even globally, whether it's issues of climate change, the end of cheap energy, uh, increasing awareness of health-related issues relating to urban form, uh, air quality, etc. These things are all becoming prevalent and, and essentially landing in the city building professions uh, with regard to solutions. So we as planners, we as urbanists are well suited to be uh, a significant part of the solution in all of these various convergence of issues. I'm not sure we're playing that role right now. In our best moments we are, and in our worst moments we're either apologists or, or actually standing in the way of, of, uh, of uh, real progress in these kinds of areas. But that's certainly something that I think the planning profession is working very hard to change, and, and something we like being a model of uh, in the city of Vancouver. We like being a, a different kind of a model for how uh, cities can move towards addressing some of these issues. Uh, I say this not to brag, but to, to start off with the, with the perspective that Vancouver has done very well uh, in the livability side of things, uh, but we're increasingly asking ourselves, notwithstanding our ranking uh, in The Economist as the, the most livable city in the world, or Mercer, uh, the uh, fourth most livable city in the world, uh, but we're asking ourselves, is livability enough? And even what livability means in the context of, of increasingly, sorry, uh, uh, using this term of resilient livability, a term I used during the eco-density exercise, recognizing that we tend to think about li livability often in the context of whether our single-family neighborhoods are content and happy in their lifestyles. Uh, compare that to the kind of livability challenges we have when we have fundamental issues relating to the cost of energy and energy supply issues, uh, energy security, for example. When we start to really see the significant consequences uh, and can connect the dots with the significant consequences relating to climate change, and just the, the simple health-related issues of urban form, are we really as livable as we even think we are in this context? And is our livability going to be able to be maintained as we move forward in the future? My friend Jan Gale from Copenhagen, who was just again visiting us in Vancouver this past week, uh, has a new book which you should all read called uh, Cities for People. And what he likes to say is that there's an opportunity to kill five birds with one stone uh, when you plan for a city of people. When you fundamentally think about how people engage in their city, uh, not cars, for example, you end up achieving a lot of the different definitions of success that we as city planners and urbanists are trying to achieve. And you could add resiliency there, you could add any number, whatever your favorite uh, term is to, to equate to success these days. Uh, if you think about it from the perspective of uh, planning a city for people, you can often get there while achieving many other things at the same time. So in Vancouver, uh, we've got an awful lot of attention for our downtown, and we're, we're very much proud of that. And, and increasingly, we've been planning for a complete downtown. We've spent decades doing what we've called the Living First strategy. It's been remarkably successful, attracting about an additional 50,000 people within our downtown peninsula, about 7,000 children within our downtown peninsula, all while reducing the number of car trips into our downtown, significantly increasing our uh, pedestrian cycling and, and, and transit trips downtown, and doing it in the exact opposite way that most North American transportation engineers actually uh, think you have to do to get there. Uh, but uh, we've learned a lot from what we have been doing in our downtown area, and we're really working to apply it to the rest of the city, which is, and even the rest of the region, because still in Vancouver, 50% of the land area of the city of Vancouver is made up of single-family houses. So for all of our attention in the downtown, which we're very pleased about and proud of, we're, we're taking our lessons, applying them in different contexts, uh, and, and, uh, and seeing how what we've done well in the downtown can be translated into the rest of the palette. And this is going to be uh, essentially our palette for urbanists and planners over the course of the, the next few generations. I want to give you a little taste of the regional context, though. I think most of you, put up your hand if you're from British Columbia. Somebody. Very good. Congratulations for coming up this way. Uh, so this is old hat for you, but uh, for, for others, uh, we're talking about uh, an area that's very... Okay, I, I might need help from uh, my friend back at the back because this is a bit sketchy. Um, 
The, um, these are our natural boundaries. We've often said densification may come a bit naturally to us, given that we're bordered by either mountains or water or uh, uh, federal borders. So it's made our, our, our discussions about compact communities uh, a little easier. At the same time, we applied our own uh, 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 barrier to, to growth and development, if you will, in the form of the Agricultural Land Reserve, which is the most fertile land in British Columbia, and an absolute critical component for food security and resiliency as we move forward as a city and region. Even in the context of, of, of decades of pressure to allow developments uh, in this area. Uh, thankfully, our forefathers didn't do that, and uh, it's become the cornerstone of our food resiliency strategy for the region. Next slide. Uh, at the same time, in the regional context, uh, we're, we've been uh, working under the context of the livable region strategy for several decades. Uh, it's, it's, it's a very strong policy in terms of its aspiration, the idea of concentrated, clustered, mixed-use town centers linked by transit. And, uh, uh, we're in the process right now of actually approving a new regional plan that takes it from uh, a plan based on consensus. It's remarkable how much we've managed to achieve given that the plan had no regulatory status. But we're actually putting in place a new regional plan now that is much stronger, particularly in key areas like preservation of job space and preservation of an agricultural land, two areas that I'll refer to later in my talk. Uh, I like to say that livability and resilience in Vancouver starts with the answer no, the most important answer the city of Vancouver ever gave, which was to say no to freeways uh, in the late 60s and early 1970s. And given that, that this is where uh, the, this is where the uh, freeways would have gone, maybe not. Okay, there we go. Oh. You know what? To my friend in the back, I'm just going to do this, okay? I mean, great. Uh, this is where the freeways would have gone, uh, and it would have lobotomized our downtown in the way that many other downtowns uh, were lobotomized by freeway infrastructure. As a matter of fact, we've got one little piece of freeway infrastructure, our, um, our, um, our viaducts that we're debating taking down right now uh, in, in Vancouver. But um, uh, go ahead, sir. Uh, Given that we said no to that kind of infrastructure, uh, we had to take a counterintuitive approach to achieving all of our transportation and mobility needs. And thankfully, our forefathers recognized uh, the most important transportation strategy is a land use strategy. And my own engineers, my, my engineering colleagues, say that out loud, which is not something you normally hear from engineers across North America. But we've taken in Vancouver a very integrated approach of transportation and land use planning. Uh, high densities, mixed use, compact communities with an actual reduction in car capacity infrastructure, gradually moving, uh, go ahead, uh, gradually moving, one more, gradually moving to this prioritization. Uh, we don't balance mode choice in Vancouver. We've been prioritizing mode choice for several decades. Uh, walking, then cycling, then transit, then the movement of goods and services for economic development, and then the private automobile. We don't ban the private automobile, at least we, we haven't in the past, although we're looking at car-free scenarios uh, these days, but we've prioritized it last, and we've walked the talk on that in terms of our capital budgeting, our public ground planning, our infrastructure planning. So we've been gradually taking car capacity away and giving it over to widen sidewalks, bike lanes, bus lanes, etc. Uh, in the context of this prioritization, which has been a critical uh, uh, partner to our land use strategy, which is about high density, livable, mixed use densification, particularly within our downtown. So uh, we start with walking, or what I call the power of nearness, the idea that even your sustainable modes of farness, like transit, for example, are still not as good as actually being able to walk to everything in a, in a compact uh, sense. So um, the idea of go ahead, uh, a kind of a completely ubiquitous walking uh, experience, experiential planning and, 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 and planning at eye level, as, uh, as young Gail would put it. Uh, continuous um, attention to the public realm detail, not only the horizontal, but the vertical as well, on the street wall particularly. We pretty much ban blank, blank walls in Vancouver, and we always make sure that our urban edge, activating the public realm, is always engaging, safe, enlivening to the public realm. And this is a critical component for walkability. Cycling is our second choice. We're doing an awful lot in the area of, of expanding cycle capacity. Uh, currently, we 